Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem sign of the product of an array. It's May 1st, so you know they are gonna give us an easy question, but be careful because this easy problem is actually a little bit trickier than it might seem at first. I actually did get the wrong answer. Well, at least the way they intended us to solve this problem. But the idea is simple. We're given an array of integers like these. We could have some negative integers. We could have some positive integers. We could even have zero though in this case we do not have zeros we only have a bunch of positive and negative values the story here is that there is a function defined but I'm just going to completely ignore that and explain to you how I kind of read this problem which you can kind of you know skim over here because it's pretty short but basically we're going to take the entire array multiply each value together that's what they define the product as being that's something you're probably familiar with so when you multiply all of these together we're going to get some value by by the end of it. Now, it could be a really big value or a really small value. It doesn't really matter. What we care about is just that, is this value a positive value or a negative value, or maybe it's equal to zero. Those are the three cases. If it's positive, we return one. If it's negative, we return negative one. And if it's zero, we return zero. So pretty easy here. How are you gonna solve this problem? Probably just by multiplying each number together. Multiply this, 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 and at the end of it, we will have a negative integer, I believe. So actually, no, it is positive. So we are going to return a one. You multiply all of these together you're gonna get a 144, I guess, from this description. So we return a positive one, great. Now, before I tell you the mistake, what if in a real interview, your interviewer asked you, what's the problem with an approach like this? Or maybe what's the potential problem with this approach? Because it doesn't really take any extra memory. We're just iterating through the array. So memory complexity is constant. Time complexity is big O of N because we are scanning through the array, but we can't really do much better than that to get the problem product of an array. So what could possibly be wrong with this solution? Well, you might recall that sometimes in problems, values can get really, really big, and we sometimes have to mod the result by some prime number in leak code problem, something like seven or something like that. The reason we end up doing that is because big numbers can overflow. In languages like Java and C++, max integers, I think, are usually 32 bits, maybe 64 bits. I think depending on which type you might be using. But the point is that the max integer that that can hold is something like 2 billion. I don't think Python has this limitation, but I think it's definitely worth discussing because this is a relevant point in real software development. Yeah, I think it's kind of stupid to have to memorize complex algorithms like union find and Dijkstra's algorithm, but this is something that's worth knowing that integers can overflow. A lot of bugs can be caused by this. So how can we solve this problem? without multiplying each value together because I kind of didn't talk about it, but when you have values multiplied three times four, of course that's gonna be 12, but we could have some really, really big numbers here and you multiply, you know, 100 by itself a few times and you're gonna end up with really, really big numbers like a billion or 10 billion and that's going to end up overflowing. Okay, so how do we fix that? Well, the answer here is that we don't actually have to multiply each number together because remember, we don't have to return the product. We just have to return the sign of the product. How do we know what the sign of a product is going to be? What's the sign of this going to be? Well, it's always going to be positive because all of the numbers are positive. Now, if we add a zero to this, it doesn't really matter what the rest of these are, whether they're positive or negative. A zero multiplied by anything is always going to be zero. So this will return zero. Now, when we introduce a negative number like negative four, and let's assume that we got rid of the zero. This product is gonna be six. Multiplying it by negative four is going to make it negative 24. Multiplying it by another negative number is gonna make it positive 72. Multiplying it by another negative number is gonna make it negative 144. So with each negative number, we kind of are alternating sign. This negative one is gonna make this a positive number now. So that's pretty much the trick here. If you're a math person and you wanna see like the formula, this is kind of what it would look like. Something like this, well, this is like 
like the original that I was showing you. You just multiply all of these together. But this is the same formula in a different way to like write it. You can basically see I've taken all of these negatives and converted them into positives, except for the negative one, which I just kind of left the same over here. And we now have four negative ones over here. These two are exactly the same, but this one kind of makes it obvious that the negatives will cancel each other out. Whenever we have two negative values, the negatives will cancel out. So we will end up with a positive value. Anytime you see two negative signs in a product, you can kind of just think that they are not there. So we're going to get rid of those two. We're going to get rid of these two negative signs as well. So when you just have one to the power of four, that's just going to be one. We don't care about this. And so we just have the real product remaining, the positive product. So as you can kind of tell, this is what's going to tell us our solution because we don't care about the actual value. Who cares about this? We care about the sign. How many negative values were there? If there are four negative values, the result is going to be positive. If there are three negative values, the result is going to be negative. If we have an even number of negative values, the result is going to be a positive number. Just like we had with this result, it was 144. If we have an odd number of negative values, the result is going to be a negative number. So basically, we're just going to be counting how many negative numbers we actually have. So now let's code this up. Okay, so since all we really are doing is counting the number of negative integers that we have, let's create a variable for that. And then let's just iterate through each number in the input array. If the number is zero, so if not n or n is just equal to zero, I like saying equal to zero because it makes it kind of obvious what we're dealing with, with Python. And so in this case, we can just immediately return zero. That's the pretty simple case. The other case here is if the value is less than zero, we want to add one to the count. We're basically trying to increment our negative count here. But if n is less than zero, that's when we want to add one. Otherwise, we want to add zero. I'm just using the ternary operator. The syntax in Python looks like this. It's a bit different in other languages. This is pretty simple here. We're just adding one to this if the number is negative. Otherwise, we're just adding zero, which doesn't do anything. We could have written this a different way, which would just take you like a couple extra lines of code if you wanted to like actually write out the full if statement. But I will not do that. But this is a pretty small thing. You can write it however you would like. After this is done, though, we are going to return our result. What is our result, though? Because it's not the number of negative values in the array. We are actually going to return negative one if the number of negative values is even. We know that if we mod this by two, and then it is one. And I think I misspoke. What I meant to say is when the number of negative values is odd, then we want to return negative one. Otherwise, we want to return positive one. I keep confusing myself here. But this is the entire code. And the biggest thing you want to notice here is that we are not actually multiplying each number in the input array. So this will not lead to overflow. Yes, we have a negative counter. We might count the number of values in the array, but that will not exceed 2 billion, so it will not overflow. And in Python, you don't really have to worry about overflow, but I think it's still worth talking about anyway. So now let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. According to leak code, I guess it's not super efficient, but in terms of time complexity, it is. So I wouldn't really pay too much attention to this. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.